In the previous tutorial, we learned that the purpose of the Django migration system is to automate and manage the evolution of a database schema in conjunction with changes made to Django models. It ensures consistency across development environments, facilitates version control, and provides a systematic approach to applying and rolling back changes to the database structure. Now that we have a basic understanding of the Django migration system, let's now define and apply a basic Django migration workflow. Once we have this foundational knowledge, in the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and look at the other end of the spectrum and have a look at a more advanced Django migration workflow. Now, although the approach to Django migrations may vary based upon the scale and context of the project, the underpinning process is very much the same. We define models or changes to our models, we create a migration, we apply the migration, and then we can check the database structure. This is very much the baseline, and from this point, the scale of the project will influence the complexity and formality of the migration process. The smaller projects may focus on simplicity and flexibility, while larger projects will demand more rigorous planning, documentation, and collaboration among development teams and stakeholders. It is really interesting how this process changes from the enthusiastic or individual developing a Django application to a global enterprise. As an individual working on small scale Django projects, we often find migrations to be straightforward and manageable. With fewer collaborators, this process tends to be simpler. As an enthusiast individual, you have the advantage in actual fact of direct involvement in every aspect of development, including database changes. This hands-on approach provides flexibility and control over the migration process. Even the small change from enthusiasts to solo developers, we see potentially quite a large difference in how we interact with the Django migration system. Solo developers operating on a small scale share similarities with enthusiast individuals, but often involve more structured planning. With the vision for future scalability, solo developers take on the sole responsibility for managing migrations and database changes. So this typically necessitates careful consideration of the long-term impact of each migration, laying the foundation for growth and adaptability. Then we move up to the next level where we're then working in a more business environment. So freelancers may engage in small projects with clients. They will encounter unique considerations in their migration. So migrations can become a little bit more complex. Collaboration with clients is introduced and then that necessitates the need for maybe clearer migration documentation. And this is where we potentially see fragmentation. So we need more coordination with clients for database changes potentially, and migrations then become more critical for aligning technical decisions with client expectations. And then on the top of that, we then need more effective communication. This becomes a, a key aspect potentially in the migration process. And then we compare that with startups. So small startups operating on a small to medium scale prioritize flexibility and speed in migrations. The focus is on accommodating evolving business needs while laying the groundwork for potential growth. Now, taking that a step forward, in digital agencies, for example, with medium scale projects, there may be a clear separation of concerns. So we may start to see at a medium scale, different teams handling migrations and development streamlining the process. So structured migration processes are in place to accommodate diverse client projects. This can ensure efficiency and consistency in managing database changes across various projects undertaken by the agency. And then we move to large scale enterprise corporations, for example. So enterprise corporations operating on a large scale uphold potentially strict adherence to database design principles. Extensive planning for migrations is a key focus to ensure the stability and reliability of the database. We will probably also start to see more collaboration among multiple development teams 
which is going to be essential with dedicated roles for database administrators, which will be overseeing the large scale migrations. And it keeps going. So government organizations, for example, with large scale applications, they may prioritize security and compliance in the migration process. You may start to see more in-depth planning and documentation, which will be integral for auditing purposes, ensuring that migrations adhere to regulatory standards. This meticulous approach to migrations aligns with their stringent requirements of government applications. Now to add to that mix, global enterprises, we think here large scale and distributed development environments implementing robust version control and migration strategies will be the standard. These strategies ensure the seamless integration of changes across complex systems. Integration with enterprise level data management systems and tools become critical for maintaining data consistency and system reliability at a global scale. So although the migration process is a very simple process, we define the model or changes, we create a migration and apply a migration, then check the database structure. The scale of the project will influence the complexity and formality of this migration process. Smaller projects may focus on simplicity and flexibility, while larger projects demand more rigorous planning, documentation and collaboration among development teams and stakeholders. Reflecting on the numerous complexities of data migrations, we hope that this module and the next module will provide you some underpinning knowledge to help you on your journey towards mastering data migrations. Right, so having said that, let's go ahead now and take a look at this basic process within a Django project. The basic migration process starts with defining or making changes to the models. You can see here that we have already generated some models. So this isn't necessarily a follow along tutorial. I'll just take you through the basic process here and you can watch and maybe you can replicate this on a Django project that you have available. If you are following along, assuming that you do have an application ready and a models defined, the first stage of the process is to create a migration. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will formalize this in other tutorials in this module, but let me just take you through the process. So here on the Mac, I'm going to run the manage.py and the first stage is to make migrations. So the make migrations command in Django is used to generate new database migration files based upon the changes detected in our Django models. So when you make changes to your models, like adding a new field or modifying an existing one, Django helps you keep your database schema in sync with your models by creating migration files. These migration files contain the necessary instructions to apply the changes to the database. Assuming that you have created an application in your Django project utilizing the command create app, you will have a new folder, the new app folder, and within inside of that folder, you should have the migrations folder. So that's generated autom automatically for you. So within this folder now, you can see there is a migration file. The migration file was generated through running the command make migrations. So notice if I were to, for example, run the make migrations command again, notice that it indicates that there are no changes detected. And in actual fact, the migration file has not been created. So in addition to Django detecting model changes, it will also compare with existing migrations. So if we run the make migrations command again, like we just did there, it will compare the current state of your models with the existing migration files in the migrations directory. Now, of course, here we are working at an app level. So it will do that for every single app that has been registered inside of your main project folder in your installed app settings. So here we just have one app at the moment, but you can uh, build that up to as many apps as you like. And the same will happen for all those apps all at once, assuming that you run the make migrations command on a global level. So it is important to understand that when we run make migrations, Django will perform this operation for all of the apps within our project. 
Now, it might not always be the case that we want to run make migrations for all apps. We might want to define an app within Django to run the make migrations. So when you run make migrations for a specific app, it will generate migration files only for the models within that app. So we simply just need to, after make migrations, define the app that we want to run the make migration. So in this case, it would just be inventory. When you run make migrations, Django creates migration files in the migrations directory of each app. These files name with the numeric prefix and description name. So we can see a numer numeric prefix and then a descriptive name contain Python code representing the changes to the database schema. Now, what we can now do is use the show migrations command to read information from these migration files. And even if you haven't applied them to the database yet. So let's go ahead and run show migrations and then we can view details about the migration. So here specifically, we're looking at the inventory section. So you might be wondering where all these other tables that are going to be created come from. Now, if you go into settings, you will find that by default, when you create a Django app using the admin commands, Django admin commands, create project, you'll find that Django by default adds all of these apps to your project. And they will require, some of these will require database tables. So when you create the initial migration within your application, you will find that these tables will be created. And that's what you're looking at here. So these detail the tables that are going to be created based upon the fact that these apps have been installed within your Django application. What we will find when we run the migrate command, the next step of this process, an X will appear against these indicators to indicate the fact that these steps have now been migrated to the database. So as it stands at the moment, we've simply just created a file. And this file contains all the instructions for then Django ORM to create the tables in the database. So we have defined some models and we've created a migration. So now we can go ahead and apply the migration to the database. For this, we simply run Python manage.py migrate. So you can see that the migrations have been applied to the database. It looks like everything is successful. We have the OK indication at the end, indicating the fact that they have been applied successfully to the database. We can see at the bottom here, the inventory migration has taken place and it was successful. In this example, we are using the default SQLite database. So I can right click, I have a app installed called SQLite, open the database, and I can now view the tables that have just been created through that process. At the bottom here, you can see the inventory tables indicated by the app name and then the class name of the model that's defined in the inventories app model file. So if I go back into the inventory model, we can see a number of different Django models here. So we have the category. So that is indicated here by the Django category table. So if I drop that down, you can see all the fields here, name slug is active parent, that all correlates with the individual fields you can see in our actual database. Of course, depending on what database backend you're using will depend on how you access the database. Now that we have completed the migration to the database, let's go ahead and show migrations again. And this time you can see the X, which indicates the fact that the migration task has now been completed. Taking a closer look at the database, you will also notice that a Django migrations table has been created. So let's take a look at the data. So you can see inside of here is a list of all the applied migrations, one of them being the inventory migration that we previously created. At this point, if we wanted to make any changes to the models, we simply make those changes, create a new migration using make migrations, apply the migrations, and the process is very much the same. So if we were to make any changes, we go ahead and make a change there. Let's remove the field. We would then run the make migrations command again, and then we can go ahead and migrate. So this time you can see that a new file has been generated because Django has inspected the previous migration and has found that we have made a change. 
to our fields, it has found a change. So therefore it has generated a new file for this change. We go ahead and migrate. We now have our second migration. We can of course inspect the database for the change. Clearly here we now have the initial migration for inventory. And now you can see the second change that we have just made. So that really is the underpinning process of the migration system. Now we can think about adding additional layers. So in addition to defining our models, creating migrations, applying them and checking the database structure, at this basic level, we might also start to consider handling data migrations. So when we make changes to the database schema, it might be that we have to, in addition to changing the schema, also consider how the data is going to change within our database to accommodate that schema change. These processes we will discuss in more detail in the next module of this course, where we focus on data migrations within the migration process. Other additional tasks might include rollback changes if there was a problem. And of course, it's always recommended before you undertake this type of process at whatever level is that you have a good database backup process in place. So do make sure you back up before you start thinking about making a migration. It's always recommended. In this tutorial, we defined, created a basic Django migration workflow. And then we applied this workflow to a Django application, making a database migration.